Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Brawl Battle, and in this episode, we'll be talking about loops. And this is a pretty important one, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so on the right side, let's just quickly disable our uh, script from the previous episode, and then we will go to workspace, create a new script, and then we will call this one uh, loops. That's what we're gonna call this one. Okay, and let's delete this. Okay, so let's say when you're programming on Roblox, there's gonna be a time where you want to execute the same task over and over and over again. There's another feature that makes running the same task over and over again way more efficient, and that is through the practice of loops. So let me show you an example of what I mean by repeated tasks. So let's say we want to make a print statement that's like uh, print one, and then if we drop a line down here, we want to print two. And then if we drop a line, we want to print three. And then if we want to drop a line, print four, and then uh, print five. So as you can see, uh, if we just have like five different lines that prints incrementally from one, two, three, four, and five, it's just gonna it's just gonna be very time consuming. And we want to be able to perform the same task that generally does uh, the same the the same set of instructions uh multiple times without having to just constantly copy this and then paste it again and again and again because it's gonna very quickly mess up our code and it's not going to be as efficient as we want our code to be it's gonna be less readable it's gonna be less functional and it's just gonna be harder to work around so that's why a solution to this would be using loops and there's gonna be two types of loops that i'll be discussing about in this episode one, it's gonna be for loops, and then two, it's gonna be while loops. So first, let's talk about for loops. A for loop is essentially a loop structure uh, that counts a number from a starting value to an end value, and it keeps incrementing until it reaches that end point. Um, and this is useful to know how many times, how many times exactly you want to run a specific, a specific task or a specific line of tasks. So for loops, are useful for for knowing exactly how many times you want to execute a task or a specific number of tasks inside of your inside of your loop. And the way it is structured is we first start with a for keyword and then we hit space. And on screen, I'm going to be showing you a graphic of a um, uh, created by the Roblox Developer Hub that shows in good detail uh, how the for loop structure goes. So with the first number, uh, that's your starting number of the number that you want to start with, and then the second number is the end number of where of the number that ends when you keep repeatedly doing the same task, and then it goes back up. And then the increment value is how much is going to be added on to the to the counter every time we reach the end of the the loop. So a loop is kind of self self explanatory. Like it starts at the top of the loop, and then it executes everything that's inside of that loop until it reaches the bottom, and then it just goes back up, and then does the exact same thing again and again until you reach the endpoint. That's kind of the idea of how a loop goes. That's why you're able to repeatedly do the same tasks as many times as you wanted to through this for loop structure. And it's very important to know how this for loop structure goes. So the way it starts is our, like I said, our starting value. Our starting value usually is going to be like, uh, like one for instance, and then we're going to have an end value that ends at like five or something. And what we're gonna start with is a four keyword space. And then much like how we create a variable, we need a variable name to associate that to reference a specific value. So same thing here, we're creating a new variable that's going to act as our counter uh, value so that we know where it starts, we know where it ends, and how much it will increment after each, after each iteration. So uh, we're going to call our variable my counter, just, just for this example, that's what we're going to call it. Uh, and then we're going to hit space. And what we're going to do is we're going to say equals space, and then we're gonna have our starting value, which is going to be one in this case. Then we're gonna have a comma to indicate our second value, which is going to be where the counter is going to end. And for this case, it's going to be five. And so we're gonna hit a uh, comma again, space, and then we're gonna specify how much of the value is going to be incremented when we reach the bottom and finish our first iteration, which is going to be one again. And uh, what we do next is we hit space. And usually for this case, uh, when we uh, drop a line and then Roblox automatically ends like the, the structure for us, 
Um, we would usually put, an, uh, put a then, and then uh, Roblox will automatically put an end here. But in this case, we're actually not going to use a then. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to write the keyword do. And so this is how the structure goes. You have for the keyword, and then the counter variable, which is going to be set initially to one, and then it's going to keep going until it reaches the number five. And every single time it reaches the bottom throughout each iteration, it's going to increment by one time. So it's going to start at one, and then it's going to do everything it needs to do in this for loop, and then it's going to go back up, and then it's going to increment to two, and then it's going to go all the way down, and then go back up, increment to three, go all the way down, and then uh, increment to four, go all the way down, and then increment to five, go all the way down, and then that's where it finally stop stops. It's going to do this five times because we started at one, and it's going to increment by one every single time until it reaches our end value, which is five. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to write a print statement in here uh, where we're just going to print some random thing. Uh, we'll just say number in this case. So if we go back to our game and then go to test and then hit play, then on our output, it should show that number has been printed out five times. And, and it printed out five times because we started at one and then it kept on going until our uh, counter reached five. So that's why it went through five times. Now let's say we want to replicate the, the five print statements that I did at the beginning of this video where I printed one, then two, then three, then four, then five. Uh, with my counter, as you know, my counter updates after every single iteration. So what we can do is that we can actually print whatever value my counter is during each iteration. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, delete what's in the print statement, and then we're going to replace it with my counter. Now let's see what happens when we go back to the game and then hit play. So if we do that, then it should be printing out whatever the value of my counter is throughout each single iteration. So it starts at one, and then it goes down here, prints it, which is one, and then it goes back up. My counter then increments to two, and then it just keeps doing that until it reaches the end value, which is five. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be introducing you to our next loop, which is the while loop. A while loop is essentially a type of loop that continuously iterates forever until a certain condition is met. And if that condition is never met, then the loop is just going to keep going over and over and over and over again. And there would be, and it would just keep going until a certain condition is met. And we would have to be able to specify that condition so that we know when to stop the loop. So let's just uh, drop a few lines down here. And what we're and what we're going to do down here is we're go I'm going to be I'm going to be showing you the structure of a while loop. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create our own variable and it's going to be separate from the structure of the actual loop itself. So we're just going to create a variable by typing local and then we'll say my while counter and then we'll say equals one. That's what we're going to say here because this is going to be our starting value and it's going to change later on uh, while we're actually looping through the thing. So now let's drop uh, a line. Uh, so now let's drop two lines down here, and what we're going to say here is we're going to start with our structure. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to say while, and then what we're going to do is uh, type in our counter while my while counter, and let's say our end value is going to be five. So we'll say while my while counter is less than five. So this is going to iterate five times. And once again, we're not going to say then, we're going to say do, and then Roblox will automatically end the while loop here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to print uh, my while counter, just like last time. Now, here's the very important thing to know about. It's very easy to break the game if you don't know how to structure your while loops properly. So essentially what's happening here is that my while counter is equal to one. And we're saying that while my while counter is less than five, uh, I want you to print this. But here's the thing, nothing is happening to my while counter every time this, uh, this print statement is occurring. Meaning my while counter is not updating for every single time we're iterating through this while loop. And so my while counter will always be one and it will never reach five. So that's the issue with while loops is that you have to be very careful with knowing how to control your control variable properly. And this is definitely not the way to do it, but we're, and this is definitely not the way to do it. We have to keep adding on to this. So what we have to do is 
we have to increment the value ourselves every time we print my while counter. So let's drop a line down here underneath the print statement. And so how we're gonna change the counter ourselves is by incrementing my while counter by one every single time that this print statement is uh, printing. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say my while counter, my while counter plus equals one. Now, what this means plus equals uh, what I just did here is that plus equals is a special kind of operator where it's basically saying my while counter, uh, I want you to add and also set my while counter to whatever, uh, to whatever the counter is going to be after you add this number that's on the right side. So for example, my while counter is equal to one. So if we say my while counter plus equals one, that's actually going to equal two because my while counter is currently one. And so if we say plus equals this number here, which is one, then my while counter is actually going to set itself to two instead of one because we just added one. Now you can't say my while counter plus one because th this is just a dead uh, expression that doesn't really do anything. So that's why just doing this is not gonna work. You have to specifically say plus equals in order for this operation to actually work. So now if we go back into the game, uh, my while counter is gonna keep going until it reaches the end bar. Sorry, I did a little mess up here. Uh, it's not my while counter is less than five. It's actually my while counter is less than or equal to five. So you have to be very careful with your conditionals because you can mess it up really easily. Like you could miss a number or two uh, when you're trying to loop through something. And so that's something you have to be very careful about. And that's pretty much how it is for these two for loops. We have the for loop and the while loop. The difference between these two loops is that a for loop you will use when you know how many times you're going to be uh, running a specific task. And a while loop you will run when you don't know how many times you're gonna be running a specific number of tasks. So that's gonna be it for the basics of loops. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, we'll do a practical example and uh, we're gonna be using a for loop. So let's just delete this here. And what we're gonna be doing is that for our for loop, we're gonna be repeatedly changing the color of our base plate using a for loop. And the way we're gonna be seeing our change is by implementing a wait statement. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete all this and then we're going to declare our base plate by saying local base base plates, that's what we're gonna call it, equals game.workspace.baseplate. So now that we have our base plate as a reference, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop two lines down here and we're gonna write a for loop. So we're gonna say for my counter equals uh, we're gonna have the starting value at one, and then we're going to drop a comma, and then we're gonna do 10, and then we're going to have the incremental value as one, do. We're going to change, we're gonna make a statement that changes the color of the base plate. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna change the base plate's uh, color. Uh, not brick color, just color. And here's, and here's how, and here's how we'll do it. So we'll say base plate dot color equals because we're going to be changing the base plate's color color three dot from rgb and uh don't don't worry about what this actually what this all means uh this isn't really that important right now i'm just going to be showing you how the loops work so then we're going to write in uh, our open and close parenthesis and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight in the middle here, and then we're gonna click on this color wheel icon to show a uh, panel with all these different colors we can choose from. And let's say we'll just do, and let's say we'll just pick a random color uh, like green or something. We'll do that. And then Roblox will automatically place in some values for us for the color. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to drop a line down here. Now we're going to add in a wait statement. And how this wait statement works is that when we, when we run a loop, everything happens simultaneously. Because if you remember from when we, uh, when we went to our output and we printed out numbers one through five, it all happened instantaneously with no wait time at all and we didn't even get to see it. So that's why it's really important to add a wait statement here so that we can actually see the change that's happening or if we want to wait a specific uh, number of seconds before something happens. So how we're gonna do that is we're going to simply write wait and then what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, add in an open and close parenthesis 
And then inside of here, our first argument or our first parameter is going to be a number. And this number indicates how many seconds we're going to wait for the code to uh, run the next thing that's underneath here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit one so that it, so meaning we're going to wait one second before we run whatever's down here. So this is immediately going to run. Then we're going to wait a second and then we're going to uh, do something else here, which is change the color again. So let's just copy this line here and then paste it inside of here. So let's just uh, hit this wheel again and then pick another random color like yellow. And then we'll drop another line with another weight. And then we will just do the same thing here. Uh, pick another color like red or something like that. And then we will end it off with one more weight. Okay, so now let's hit play. It should change the base plate 10 times or no, 30 times technically, because we're changing the brick color three times for every single iteration. So as you can see, the base plate's color is now changing from green, yellow, and then red, and then it's going to repeat that 10 times. So it's gonna change the color for a total of 30 different times for our loop structure that we had it do. So for the learning objective, I want you to utilize for loops and while loops more uh, to be familiar with how to make a starting value, an end value, and an incremental value, or how you can continue to make a loop structure for while loops, because it is different from a for loop. So like we can say, Again, for our while loop, my counter one equals one. And then while my counter one uh, is less than six or something, do whatever you want the thing to do. You can even uh, do, you can even try to change the base plate's color um, using a while loop instead of a for loop. That, that might, that could be your challenge. All right, well, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one. Take care.